Hello and welcome back to Wargaming with me Gary. I've been gone a little while. Um, I think good reasons. Uh, first off, I had a, a mini break. So me and my wife went off to Somerset. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, re really nice. Saw some friends. So some friends who used to live with us in Horsham. And uh, they've moved down to Somerset. They've got a fantastic place. Great village. Uh, the only thing in the village is the pub. It's brilliant. It's actually great. Really nice. The guy in there is so nice. And it's that kind of pub. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you this. Because I, like, I love it. Um, it's the sort of pub where you go in there and you, uh, and you, you order your drinks. You sit down. And you say, uh, can we have the same again, please? And... Uh, the guy behind the bar says, "Well, you know where the you know where the glasses are. You know where the barrels are. Go and help yourself." <laughs> Brilliant, love it, absolutely love it. Really fantastic. Um, I was hoping to get down to the uh, the military museum in Dorchester. I uh, never got round to it. Uh, we had so much on, to be honest. Um, you know, so many things to do. But we have said next time we visit them, we'll all go down to the museum because. Uh, I think it'll be a, like, a, be a treat. I've never been there before, so I'm really looking forward to it. So what am I doing? So, oh, um, so why else? So why haven't I been around for for quite a while? <clears throat> Along with a mini break, uh, I've also had... So my daughter got married, bless her heart. Uh, Amy married Dan. Um, and that, that went really well. Uh, really enjoyed it. I got very drunk. But then I do. I do. I'm, and I, I'm one of those... I'm a nice drunk. I like, you know, I'm, that, I'm that silly old guy who goes, oh, "I love you. I've always loved you." I'm that bloke, yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, so we had that. Um, I've had, I've actually had three weddings. Three weddings. A friend of ours, their their son got married. Uh, my brother's daughter got married, and then of course my own daughter got married. Now, three weddings, but I've been on four stag nights. <laughs> yes, result. Yeah, um, I, I, it's like I do prioritise stag nights at the moment. To be honest, it's because of my age. Like I think because in my head I'm thinking I'm going to be asked to attend a lot less stag nights than I am weddings. I got I got more weddings to come up to, but I think as I get older, I, I, I will probably be asked to attend less. Um, Oh no, I've got to be honest, I've taken, I have really taken uh, advantage of these stag nights. I've had a great time. So if anybody should see these from those stag nights, I'd just like to say, cheers, what a great time. Um, so that's that. So what am I going to do? So that, um, And work, I think we all, you know, work, work affects us all. Um, unless you've been lucky enough to have retired and still got all your faculties. Um... Yeah, so like work is re like I'm really really busy at the moment. Uh, a little bit stressed with work, and uh, and that that's why I've come back to doing some videos because this is for me a real de-stressor. Helps me, um, you know, relax and just chill out. And a glass of wine never hurts. Mm. I don't know what this is. It's red, red wine. Like, like I I didn't look on the bottle. But um, I'm actually I'm actually really getting into there's a uh, I've been going into Majestics uh, and we had th th there's a bottle of wine we had from there it, it comes from Muthia in Spain and uh, it's really nice uh, not too sweet uh, not it's really smooth I quite like I'm, I'm not big into things like you know, knock your head off. Um, but yeah, very nice indeed. Now, one thing I should say, uh, because I don't want to just spend all day talking about what I've been doing. Um, one, one thing I have been, uh, and what did happen at the wedding, at my daughter's wedding, um, we lost the tripod for my camera. I say we. It might have been me. <laughs> I was too drunk. I like the best thing I did was I put my camera back in my bag. Uh, when I when uh, when I was dragged up to the bar uh, for about the fourth time and uh, forced to drink four more Jaeger bombs, uh, 
I say forced. I was, <laughs> I was a willing participant. What am I worried about forced? Anyway, but, but at that point I went, let's put a camera away. But I forgot to put, I didn't put the tripod away. So I've lost the tripod. So I'm actually filming off. I've, I've put together some thing uh, which seems to be working. But I don't, I, at some point, when I show you the figures and where I'm up to now, uh, I think I'm probably going to have to um, do it with like hand handheld. Uh, yeah, so... So yeah, so that's a little bit of an update of where I've been and what I've been doing and why I, you haven't seen me. Uh, and I'm really wobbling now. Um, so, uh, what am I going to do tonight? Well, what I have done, uh, I want to show you some, um, like the figures I'm, I'm doing at the moment. Um, and also I wanted to go through um, historically how they fit with what I'm doing. Um, they probably don't quite fit but what I've decided to do is uh, to the uh, uh, king of Assyria the first king of Assyria I've decided to do a whole campaign around that period so the figures I've actually got probably aren't going to be uh, the same uh, types of outfits that they would have worn and the weapons as well what wouldn't be the same sorts of weapons uh, that they would have had um, at that period, um, but I'll go, I'll go into that um, you know, more. So, like the figures I'm actually using are probably from a later period, but I think it will still work. I think it will still work. I am going to go and get some earlier period figures. Um, that there are a few, um, there are a few um, uh, manufacturers who do uh, Suma and Akkadian figures. So, uh, so I will be going to get some of them. Uh, Egyptians work everywhere, so so that's right. Uh, people, I, I've noticed there are quite a lot of Hittites hanging around. So I will be able to to use figures of a much later period, but I might have to mix them up with some of the early, earlier period. But I think once the campaigns get going, I, I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, yes, yeah, so I wonder now. I thought I'd also, um, whilst I'm chatting about. Um, like some of the information of that period is uh, perhaps uh, do some painting and uh, and like uh, rather than you look at my like, like, at my mug uh, for too long, um, I, I I'll put it on the figures and uh, and we'll just I'll just go over some of the bits and pieces I'm doing. So this is the bit where I think it's going to get tricky. Uh, I'm going to take I'm going to take my camera off. Right, fingers crossed, I'm going to take my camera off the thing that I've produced in order to um, like film myself and, and what else I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to do that now and bear with me. I'll try not to, I'll try not to drop the camera uh, and I'll also try to hold it still. Okay, and I'll also have to turn it around. So, right, so I'm just going to... Turn that around. There. Nah. Okay. Alright. I better put my glasses on because I can't see very much. Right. So, I don't know if you remember. Um, it seems like a hundred years ago. Um, but clearly not. Uh, I, was did, like, um, I was doing four. I had to do four more Babylonians to finish the regiment. And these are them. So I'll just pull this guy forward, so you can have a look. Shields, shields again. I, I'm, I'm starting. I think I'm starting to get a hang of these shields. These are all from Little Big Man Studios. Uh, I'm very pleased with them. Uh, the bases are all on 25 mil. I, I can't remember where I got them from, uh, but I think that's working quite well. Um, I've put a tuft of grass, as you can see on this one. Uh, the tunics on all of the Babylon, uh, Babylonian, Babylonian figures are going to be blue and red, and all the sashes are going to be white and blue. But the shield, but the designs on the tunics are all different, and I've spoken about this many times. And the shields are quite a different variety, um, you know, lots of different ones as well. So that's the first one. Here's my second one. Oh, that turned out quite nicely, didn't it? 
Who needs a turntable? Okay. Uh, this one's slightly different uh, tunic. As you can see, the shield's uh, similar to the one I, I just did. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm not going to zoom in because I haven't, I haven't got enough ends. But just so you can have a look at the uh, pattern on that because I spent a little bit more time on that one. So it's only right I should show it off. And then the last one, these are my favourites at the moment. Like the, these patterns, oh, sorry, the patterns I'm using at the moment that they've got. Right, so have a look at the shield. And then uh, I love these checkered, this checkered pattern. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Yeah. So there, my four. I'm going to have come out just a little bit so that you can see. Right, so just here where my big thing, finger is, that's almost my finished regiment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can put them onto the movement trays without dropping my camera. The movement trays all come from um, war bases. Alright. And the last one in there. That's it. So that is my first Babylonian regiment. And I've got to say, I'm not I'm not too upset with that. I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way they've turned out. I think they they look quite nice. So yeah. So um yeah, so very good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you something else I'm working on. So I've got some Egyptians here I'm working on. I've got some ancient Syrians. I've changed these. I will show you these in more detail. These are the ones I painted uh, orange. Then I wasn't happy with them just being orange, so I put a yellow circle around them. Uh, I wasn't happy with that either. So what I've done there is I've like, I painted it. I paint, painted the shields um, a creamy colour. Then I put the like the um, cut the stickers out and the uh, transfers just to put close around the, the boss of the shield, and then I painted them orange again. And I'm much happier with them. I think they've come out quite nice. My first cavalry regiment is well on the way, and you can see there's a slinger there as well. But my first cavalry regiment is on the way there, so I'm quite pleased with uh, how they're going as well. Um, yeah, so that's that. Right, so I'm going to. Bear with me, I'm just going to turn that back on me. Oops, and I'm going to zoom out because that's a scary... Ah! Right. Now. Right. <laughs> that doesn't fall off, I really do. Okay, right. Um... If I come down just a little bit more, there we are. That's about right. So yeah, I'm gonna, so whilst, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some figures. So I've got uh, some cavalry figures to do. I'm going to need my proper glasses on. Um, but in the minute, at first, let me just shake these up. Now, I was going to tell you a bit more about the um, the period I'm doing. Um, but in order, what I've found is, in order for me to find out more about Tudia, the king king of Assyria, or the first king of Assyria, Assyria uh, I've had to look far and wide, because there was very little information on, on, on him at all, uh, apart from a very brief mention. Uh, so what I've done is, I've, I, was, I went back to, I, I looked at um, the Mesopotamia period, but then that led me to eventually Suma. Um, now I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown on uh, the basics of um, Suma, uh, but I think I f should first point out, and you might, you probably already know this. I'm just going to move that down just a little bit more. Okay, um, we, as a race, Homo sapiens. Have been around for around about three hundred thousand years, more or less. Um, there, there, there isn't much uh, recorded evidence of this, apart from um, some rough drawings on caves and rocks and such. So, so there's not 
that much there but but from from what uh, historians uh, believe that uh, the human race as we know it homo sapiens has been around for around about 350 no um 300,000 years now um of course there is the possibility that um there is a mix between us and Neanderthals. Um, and why do I say that? Can you see that? Yeah. So I'm just going to do the, I'm just painting some of these, uh, some of the bottoms of these tunics. Yeah. Um, now, the reason I say that is because what I know of us as a race is like. We're a, interestingly, um, if you like, scary race. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that some Homo sapiens came across Neanderthal women and, um, and took them for sexual partners. I also think that they, that the offspring from them, uh, they, there's no reason to believe why they wouldn't have wanted to um, uh, be um, included with, all right, yeah, um, with uh, Homo sapiens, so so I I, I believe that I I, you know, I have no proof, um, you know, that it's just a theory, but I think it's a reasonable theory when you think about you know like what what people do today, you know what the types of things I mean some men I believe will have sex with anything. Um, Including sheep, so if we're if we if we're saying yeah that some men do do that, then why wouldn't some men take advantage of Neanderthal women? I just it just to me it just it just seems to make sense. I'm sure not my cup of tea, but I'm sure there are people who might have found that quite appealing, you know, for whatever reason. All right, so he's done. I'm going to put him over there out of the way. Um, yeah. So, um, so that's that's what I was saying about. Um, right, he's done as well. Good. But the the other thing I wanted to talk about was. Um, the, the prehistoric period, um, you know, which identifies that, you know, and how difficult it must have been for, you know, not, you know, Homo sapiens, and Neanderthals, for everybody, you know, for the race of men, of course, but, you know, animals as well, because, well, what were, what were we doing at that time? So, we would have, excuse me, Yeah, so at that time, th 300,000 years ago, uh, we would have been moving around, uh, moving from place to place. We wouldn't have had, um, you know, there wouldn't have been houses as we know it today, uh, you know, and shelter, it would have been really just basic shelter, uh, hunting and fishing, hiding of course, you know, keeping out of the way of wild animals. And, as I've just pointed out, we're, we're not a very, although we're, we're lovely people, but we're not a very nice race. If you're not human, and even if you are human sometimes, um, you're not treated very well. Um, so, I have no reason to believe that, that just on that one. So, oh, I've, I've done around the bottom there, I've done white, but I'm going to add some colour to that. It's off, it's off white, but they're just around the bottom of his tunic. Um, yeah, so 
and then this this all works in with you know like where, where I'm going of course let me just um I was going to put some music on let me do that Oh, that's no, not too loud. No. So, of course, early people. I think that is too loud. That's a bit better. No, right, right, so I'm just going to. Right, so this is a slinger. So of course early people needed water which would have been a very valuable commodity and as luck would have it uh, the two rivers in Mesopotamia the Euphrates and uh, the Tigris River were perfect for that exactly I ideal um, so it's no surprise that Homo sapiens, us, started moving towards these areas so that we had a ready supply of water. And of course, once you, you move closer to your water source, one of the first things you do is you start building, first off, somewhere for you to live but then it would have been you know quickly they would have become set settlements and then that later on they would have become fortified settlements because nothing else has changed Do you remember what I said like you know so what what did what were people doing in the early uh, in, the, in the, uh, you know prehistory of man when they were hiding not only from animals but from each other um, why because as uh, you know as is always the case i think that's come out all right i don't know if you saw that whilst i was painting it yeah so that's quite a nice pattern yeah so um yeah so they would have had to you know protect themselves um you know and and, and i think that's the case with man generally you know historically it's been the case um you know if they want something they will take it um I, I, I should say these these types of things weren't only happening in Mesopotamia they were happening uh, in Egypt uh, you know, because of the Nile uh, and also in uh, India uh, the Indus River and uh, and also uh, in China I believe it's the Yangtze and the Yellow River um, oh, can you, yeah can you see so yeah so so that I mean for a campaign that that already gives us gives us quite an idea for some of the things we could be doing because you know, pe people are just really not a choice to fight for what you've you've done you've made and built but you have to in order to survive because if you're forced away from that water source that's virtually a death warrant so you know if, if you're not able to get water you die so the only way they would have been able to keep that was to fight for it some people won some people lost but the facts are that they would have had to fight for what they believe was theirs um sorry I, I, I struggle I'm still learning this this wonderful skill that I see other people do of being able to paint and talk at the same time clearly I haven't mastered it but I'm working on it I'll just do that I saw this I'll show you this in a minute um, I saw this on the tunic I don't know if you can see it I'll, I'll do some pictures at some point but there's a kind of like step effect on the bottom of the tunic which I've seen on quite a few drawings and uh, engravings. So I thought I'd put that in there. I thought that looks quite nice. Yeah. Um, 
He's got to come back. Yeah, so that's that, and then uh, and then this guy here. Um, yeah, so um, so when did if I just I just need that I've got some bullet points here. So the first settlements in Mesopotamia was established in about six thousand five hundred BC. So sometime, you, you see, I mean these things, you know, nothing moves as fast as things are moving now. You know, one, one minute, uh, the latest Toyota is, yeah, let's go and get that car. It looks pretty brilliant. The follow, you know, within months, it's out of date. You know, and other people, and people want, you know, the, the newer, the same with computers and everything. But no, not back then. It took a long time. So, like, you know, so from 300,000 BC to 6,500 BC, before the first settlement was um, was built in Mesopotamia and this would have been of course Sumer now not necessarily the first settlement but the strongest settlement now right I'll hang on a little bit more on this one Just do that. There we are. Right. So uh, you see on the bottom now. I've just done a line, um, a white line, an off-white line around that. I'm going to put some red bits and pieces in there uh, to make it more colourful, but not at the moment. You're right. Okay. So that's them done. Um, I'm not going to do any more just now. Because I've got to be honest, I'm finding it really difficult. Yeah, I'm finding it really, really difficult to paint and talk at the same time. So, uh, and I want, I want to get on with this historical bit because I think it's really interesting. So if I just quickly go through, um, so the first settlements in southern Mesopotamia was established. I've got some notes, that's why I'm looking over there. Move this over here a little bit. I'll tell you what else I've got, a glass of wine. Um, yeah, so Mesopotamia was established about 6,500 6, BC uh, by farmers who pioneered irrigation agriculture um, techniques, growing their own food and then building permanent homes. Um, so that all kind of links in, doesn't it? You know, it's still that thing about what I was saying first, you know, like, you know, they had to stay near the water. Uh, the water then provided an opportunity for them to grow crops. Uh, and then from the growing crops, they need to be close to their crops, so they built buildings. These settlements would, of course, become settlements. Uh, modern historians have suggested that Sumer was the first permanently settled, no, was first permanently settled between 5,500 5, BC and 4,000 BC. I mean, I mean, that, you know, like, that, that's, a, that's a big gap there. I think um, that there's, there's a, a, a bit of a problem there because there are actually two timelines running. Uh, there's the, the modern and the old timeline. Uh, and I think things get quite confused between the modern and 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 like the old from the old and the modern timeline um because and i say this because five thousand so that's a thousand years five thousand well, one thousand five hundred years that's a lot of years um to start start building homes growing crops um you know for um like for the first permanent settlement, I'm pretty sure um, you know people would learn very quickly um, that if you're building, if you're growing crops, you've got your water source, you've got um, a building, you probably stay there. 
promise that is. So they will become more. Like, I, I don't think it probably took a thousand years. Um, sorry, that's the wind. Um, so yeah, so so that's so, yeah, but that's me. Yeah, I don't know. Um, people began using metal such as copper and bronze instead of stones to make tools. Uh, and around 3000 BC, they created a system of letters and began to write. Now this is massive, the bit about began to write. Uh, this new form of living was called civilization. Uh, arguably the first civilization in the world and Mesopotamia was possibly the cradle of civilization as we know it today. Now, that's, the, the, I'm, I've, I'm gonna go on, like my next video will go on about this a bit more, in more depth um, about civilization because this, for me, civilization is how warfare developed. Because it went from, you know, a gang of men to like uh, terrorizing another gang of men and their families to get what they wanted. From organized, planned raids, wars, battles. Because those things take planning. You know, they just do. So that's so. So I think the the civilization actually, you know, it's it's funny, isn't it? We're civilized, but as I th I'm sure as we go along, we'll find that civilization was yeah. There's lots of brilliant things which civilization has built, but it also developed and progressed. Warfare, which I wouldn't would argue is not a particularly civilized thing, but that's me. Okay, so that's where I am. Uh, I've been wobbling on for quite a while. Um, I hope you like my figures. I'm going to show you some more. Um, that's just the first of many that I've I've been getting on with. Uh, I've not been wasting my time. I've been painting lots of figures, and uh, and I will show you them as we go. So um, all the best then, and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye.